All right, so then, where are we headed tonight, and what is it you would like to talk about? He said. He said. A lot of stuff going on, a lot of good topics. I can pull one of our questions out if you want to do that. Sure, pull a question out of the box. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Make me work again, huh? I know. <laughs> I like to see that, you know. <laughs> Maybe uh, I'll make you some sweet rolls next time I go baking or something. <laughs> all right. Oh, well, you know what? Uh, oh, that's, oh, we don't need that. But this is a good question. If I can find it. All right. And it's very timely given uh, what's going on with my friend. Let's see if I can get this up there. Uh, share screen and share and can you see it now? Why can't our why can our loved ones live forever here on Earth? Boy, I don't know if, if it's just me, but that needs a question mark at the end of it, not a period. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Why can't our loved ones live forever here on Earth? Oh, who would want to? Who wants to start with that? <laughs> who would want to? That's a... That's my question. Who would want to? Okay. That's a good... <laughs> Gulliver's Travels, wasn't there a land that he went to that uh, a certain number of people were immortals and... As he said, that every every family was cursed with one immortal that became more decrepit and more crankier and harder to get along with, and became a less and less likable person as time went on. But each family was cursed with at least one person like this. So, <laughs> I think there's some reality to that. You know, to stay young forever would that be a good idea? I don't know. Well, that, that's the that's the point. Um, let's um, first of all go back to the beginning, Genesis. Let's see, Genesis four or is it Genesis five? Genesis four. And start, and, and you can really pick up anywhere in here if you want, but verse, pick it up at verse 21. We've got a lot of begets in here. A lot of begets, right? <laughs> yeah, 300 years. Genesis what? 521. Oh. There's a lot. Okay, Genesis 5, 21 and following, are we there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, when Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. And after he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived 365 years. Enoch walked with God, then he was no more because God took him away. When Methuselah lived 187 years, he became father of Lamech. And after he became the father of Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Methuselah lived 969 years and then died. And as far as we know, Methuselah is the oldest person uh, in the Bible. Uh, well, that's everybody lived forever. It gets kind of crowded here. Yeah, there's a lot of long-lived people. Why do you think that, why, first of all, why do you think that is, and why don't we live that long? Because oh, Eve ate the apple. Now, wait a minute. But the Eve had already eaten the apple at the very beginning, before. Which question are you answering? 
Why do you think they live that long and why don't we live that long? Well, I think from when Adam and Eve were in the garden, weren't they supposed to be able to live forever? And then after they ate the apple, it just got, it started going down and down and down and down from there. So now we live, if we live to be 95, we're really lucky. Well, maybe not lucky, but. <laughs> Depends on your health. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we're one of those cranky people. Well, one of the things I think about, too, is if we live forever, what would we have to look forward to as far as right now we look to heaven? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Point on, Marvin. That's a very good point. A very good point. Keep your finger in Genesis there, Genesis 5, and flip over to Psalm 90. Psalm what? Psalm 90, 9-0. Zero. 9 zero. okay. Okay. And verse 10, I believe. And this psalm was written by Moses, by the way. The length of our days is 70 years or 80 if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. So we've gone from 969 years in Methuselah, and now we're at 70 years. Although Moses exceeded that. He lived to 120. Um, so what was that again? Psalm what? Psalm 90. 90. Verse 10. Well, there's so many things going on here. Obviously, we prolonged life beyond 70 years, but do we want to prolong life beyond a certain point? Personally, I would. My mother-in-law is going through a situation in a nursing home where she really doesn't get out of bed. She has no quality of life. Now they think they found two kinds of cancer. Mm. Uh, Mm. colon and lung mm. and the question is do you want to go through surgery and chemotherapy and radiation to prolong your life when your life is what it is at 83 for her when my, <laughs> when my dad got cancer he had skin cancer turned into prostate cancer but when he went, we went to the doctor. Larry and I went to the doctor with him in Indianapolis. And at that time, he was 91, I think. And uh, he sat down with us and he said, well, we could treat this and we could do this and this. But he said, if it were my father, I wouldn't do any of it. And that's what we did. And he lived uh, another year. I think we kind of answer the question there at the second half of Psalm 10, you know, why don't our loved ones live forever on earth? Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow for they quickly pass and we fly away. Why would you want to stay in a sinful and broken and messed up world like we live in? Mm -hmm. The only people that truly want to hold on to that, I, I mean, we all have a self-preservation instinct, I believe, at some point. Mm -hmm. There is something wired in us to want to keep going and preserve our life. But the ones who are holding on tighter than anybody are the ones, like Marvin said, who don't have anything to look forward to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if this is all there is, and this is the end of the road, and we just melt from here into blackness and unconsciousness, yeah, you. I guess you would want to keep living. Yeah, they're still looking for the fountain of youth. <laughs> so, the question is not why don't we live forever? The question is why would you want to do that mm -hmm. in this world? Because I would believe, in, in a way, that in a sense, uh, immortality would be a curse in some way. Immortality yeah. in the sense of living forever in this world. 
I don't know what it would accomplish. Look on your face. But this person asking the question was looks asking it from the standpoint of their loved ones, not themselves. So you think the question may be more, why do my loved ones have to die? You know, mm -hmm. our, our daughter-in-law died very young and uh, our son's still trying to deal with it. And, uh, you know, that seems like, why couldn't she have lived a few more years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. I, to me, that's a different question. <laughs> to me, that's the question of, why would that happen? But Which is a very, a very common question for people to ask. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but when I, when, I, when I look at this question, I, I'm seeing something different, I think. Uh, I certainly understand what you're saying. And that's a, I, I think when you go through a tragedy like that, that's a question you have to, that, that, that sooner or later you ask yourself or God is why did this happen? But I'm not, at least as I look at this question, I'm not sure that's what this person's asking. Let's go back to Methuselah for just a second though. Why was he, why did he get to live so long? And what do you imagine life was like for him at age 900? Genesis. Most of these, they all said they walked with God, faithfully with God or something. So, you know, an implication there that they lived a long time to go. Mm -hmm. I, I, before we leave this, though, too, I have this question. Did it raise any questions with anybody else for why the first born or when they were a hundred and some years old before they had a child. You talking about Abraham and Sarah? No, I'm talking about this. Uh, Enoch was a hundred and sixty-five when he had to became a father. Some of them were a hundred and five years old when he became a father. Did that raise any questions with anybody else? Why is that? Well, that goes back to the same question we were we were asking. Why would God allow these people to live that long? He didn't meet the right person. Yes. No, I'm saying you're, you're yeah. They couldn't find so their soulmates. He wasn't on the right dating site. <laughs> well, there are a couple of interesting explanations for this. Um, one is that and Susan mentioned this early, or is that, yes, everything has now been tainted by sin, right? Mm -hmm. And we live in a world that's polluted with sin, that has disease and sickness and death. That's why we die. But at that time, the theory goes, sin may not have had as much opportunity to kind of infect the world. And the, and the effects of sin, such as disease, maybe had not been as widespread at that time. So people lived longer lives. Mm -hmm. That's one explanation. The other is that simply God knowing that he needed people to populate his earth, he may have just had people live longer. Um, if you go back to Genesis, I mean. Was their time span, answer this real quick. Was their time span as in 365 days the same as ours? Well, that's Wait, another like, question. You, that's another I, good I, question. That's what I've always wondered. It's like, because, you know, they got. Yeah. yeah, Genesis 1, it talks about the world being, uh, everything being created in six days. But we know it says in Peter that. Um, to the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand mm -hmm. years are like a day. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're just not sure about that. But just so, to back up a chapter to Genesis 4, where Cain and Abel split up, right? Mm -hmm. um, Cain murders Abel, and then, Ab and then Cain's got to be a wanderer. So if you look, for example, at Genesis 4.17, 
It says Cain lay with his wife and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Where did his wife come from? To sister. Could be. I mean, as far as we know, the only people at that time were Adam, mm -hmm. Eve, Cain, mm -hmm. Abel, and Seth, and whatever other children they had. So it could have been an incestuous relationship. It could have been uh, that God simply created more people to help with the repopulation effort. Hmm. Never thought of that, that along that way. Well, it's also the same thing where you, if you go forward to Genesis 6, and these are just interesting questions in Genesis that we will never, ever figure out. Right. Uh, Genesis 6, and I think we've even talked about this before. Verse 4. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them. They were heroes of old, men of renown. And these Nephilim were giants. Mm -hmm. So where did they come from? Not from our family. <laughs> <laughs> where did, yeah, well, some people say, well, they must have been from angels, but <laughs> elsewhere in the Bible, it, it says that angels neither marry nor procreate. So... Mm, gosh. Oh, Where did man. these people come from? So th th these are all interesting, kind of related questions, kind of side issues. On the earth in those days, and also afterward, maybe, okay, I'm going to throw this out here. They were from another planet. Huh? <laughs> They were all here. They they were, that was instituted by God's will. Uh, if you could believe that, it's no less uh, incredible to, to believe that God just sent them down, created them out of the dust like he created. Uh, I'll, put the, I'll put that on my list of questions to ask God later on. Yeah. <laughs> or just ask Tony when you get up there, because he took a list. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure he did. <laughs> Lengthy list. <laughs> but there are a lot of places in the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, where old age is seen as a blessing. You are living a wisdom? blessed life if God allowed you to live to old age. Do we still feel that way? Or do we want to live to old age? Well, do we have a day? Has God set a day for us? Die. I mean, that's been preordained from the time you were born. The date of your the date the hour of your death, isn't it? You know, it I says, about that. Well, it says in Hebrews, it is appointed once for man to die, and then the judgment. So God has appointed the, the hour and time we will die. But I, I just am not sure what the Traction of living to 90, 95, 100. Uh, we'll talk in the sermon Sunday about a guy that lived to be 106. Didn't, uh, don't we always look at people, though, that were, I know that when I, my grandparents, and I had great grandparents that I, I vividly remember, you always looked at those with more wisdom. The older you all, you know. I always mm -hmm. felt that they had more wisdom and, you know, they were my elders. So they were, you were respected them. There was a, there was a, a, a higher layer of respect that was given to your elders. And so, you know, maybe that's what some of this is, you know, you walked with God and so many of them back then did, then they do so now, but it was just, you know, you had that respect. It was an honor to, uh, to actually know someone at that age. And well, look at, um, Go to Job chapter 12, verse 12. And this is not the only place that it says this. Job 12, 12. And when somebody gets there, go ahead and... With age in is wisdom, 
and in length of days understanding. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So the idea is with age comes wisdom and that is supposed to be valued. I'm, I'm not sure it is so much in our culture anymore. Yeah, with Alzheimer's and dementia. It seems we live in a kind of a disposable society. Oh, very much. Where the idea is to, you, we're always replacing things. And if something wears out, you go get a new one. And, uh, Sadly, I think we're starting to take that attitude with people as well. I do agree with that. I've seen a little bit of that even. Well, think about how many people's had something replaced on your body. Mm -hmm. But we've almost, in a sense, devalued age and wisdom and maturity. The idea is, well, once you get to a certain age and you've outlived your usefulness, uh, mm -hmm. it's time for you to go. Mm -hmm. And it, it used to be a big issue. I don't know if it is anymore, but uh, assisted suicide, which mm -hmm. I think is still on the books oh, in some sense. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea that, you know, once you get to a certain place and time in life and you just don't want to live anymore, will help you take care of that. Yeah, yeah. We won't sustain. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. When dad was uh, getting close to his final days, he knew it, and he would pray that God take him. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, I, I think that reflects a lot of wisdom. It, it is the acknowledgement that life belongs to God. Mm-hmm. It really should not be ours to give or take. It's God's to give and take, whether that's before birth or at end of life. Um, my friend I was just telling you about, we were talking. He said here, he went and visited him last week, said his dad couldn't get out of bed, couldn't go to the bathroom by himself, couldn't feed himself. I mean, that's not a real high quality of life. But at the same time, we acknowledge that our times are in God's hands, and it's up to God when he wants to bring us home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, my grandmother, when she was, uh, couldn't live at home anymore, and dad and them put her in a nursing home, and she still hated it. Um, and I would visit her, and she was becoming despondent, and I would just talk to her, and I would just say that I just, my prayers would be that she would go to sleep and wake up in heaven. And uh, that's what she wanted, and those were my prayers. You know, I just did, uh, did she? Yeah, finally, it wasn't didn't happen didn't happen quickly. It took about a year or so, but mm -hmm. you know, it was on God's time. But I did, and she knew I was I was praying for that, and um, that was just her that was her hers and my conversation. But you know, it was in God's time. Well, even, even though it's not specifically written for this situation, I really like what's written in John 21. John 21, uh, 18. And as I think about that, one of the things I really, really want to try to do is whatever my end of life situation is, I want to be at peace with it. And I don't want to be a burden to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't want to have to have people sitting around. Well, what are we going to do with them? I don't know. What are we going to do with them? You know, it's your turn. <laughs> yeah. Although you know, it used to be that way before nursing homes got so popular. Older relatives would go and stay a couple months here and a couple mm -hmm. months there and a couple. They'd months. move around. They would. My great grandmother did that. Yep. She'd go to spring one one with one daughter, then she'd spend a few months with another daughter. Just kind of work. That's the way it worked out. Uh, John 21, 18. Uh, and this is Jesus speaking to Peter. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. 
If I make it to a nursing home, I'm having that posted. Like that. Right. Well, if you don't, we'll post it for you. How's that? You can do that. You can do it. Because I want to remember that. That this is a, this is a next part of life. Um, and that we should not be terrified of it. It's not pleasant. Nobody wants to go through it. Uh, it also made me think of a great verse, the other verse I'm going to have posted. 2 Corinthians 4.16. This is really appropriate, I think, for this whole discussion. Which, what's that again? 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 4.16. 4. If somebody wants to read that. 416. 416. 416. Okay. 416. 2 Corinthians 416. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. I, I love that verse, and I think it's so appropriate to this. First of all, we do not lose heart. No matter what's happening in our lives, we do not lose heart because we know we're, we're not supposed to be here, that there is something better we're going on to, that um, we have our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, that even now he has prepared a room for us, a mansion with many rooms, and that we will one day for all eternity, be in a place where there is no pain, no suffering, no tears, or no sorrow. So we do not lose heart that way. Mm -hmm. So outwardly, we are wasting away. We are. I mean, every day you get up, and you're a day older than you were the day before. Mm -hmm. It's not pleasant to think about, uh, but it is the truth. We start to die as soon as we come out of the womb. The first breath. It's almost like a clock has been started. And you only get so many ticks, and that's all you get. And so as soon as you draw your first breath, you you start the dying process, even though you're a newborn. So we are wasting away. Um, why is that not a concern for us? Because, as Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, these bodies are perishable. And we will soon get new imperishable bodies. So whatever happens to this body is, in a sense, irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. And that's what gives us hope, that we are growing in spirit and growing in devotion to God and growing in faith in Jesus. And that's what keeps us from losing heart. That, that's what our focus should be. Can, can you imagine what kind of world it would be if, if people put as much time and effort and energy in renewing their inward self as they did their outward self? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. How many people go to the gym to try to... Get in shape or stave off aging or what have you. Plastic surgery. Uh, I don't care how much plastic surgery you get, at some point, it's all pointless. <laughs> so therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. So... Um, if you want to continue on there, it says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Mm -hmm. And that's why we don't want to live forever here. Why would you want to live forever in a, a sinful, broken, messed up world like the one we've got? There are times I sit and think, I'm not sure I want to go beyond next week. Why would I want to live forever? All right. <laughs> so I, I, 
I'm not sure if I'm interpreting that question correctly the way we saw it. Uh, but we were never designed to live forever in this world. We were designed to live forever with God in the original world that he created for us, which we messed up. Uh, but our ultimate goal is, is heaven. It's heaven, eternity. And that's what we should be keeping our eyes fixed on. And somebody mentioned Tony earlier, and I was just so impressed with how he handled that whole situation. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing what was going to happen. And uh, still being saying, you know what? I'm good with it. I know where I'm going. What a, what a, what a great lesson that was. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, to everybody. Mm -hmm. He was witnessing up to the very end. Mm -hmm. I watch a lot of movies from the, uh, from the 40s and from the World War II period. And yeah, I can understand that desire to preserve life and to, to, to be, I, I just don't know how people did that, to, to go off to war knowing there was a very good chance you weren't coming back. And uh, it, it just amazes me the kind of, kind of courage people had. Um, but that, that just speaks to our desire for self-preservation and to, to hold on to the life that we've been given. But at the same time, we have to realize that there's more than this that we've been called to. Mm -hmm. Some of these birds are very loud. <laughs> Mine? I don't think it's ours. <laughs> Is your dog practicing her bird calls again? <laughs> Our dog's laying here listening to you talk. <laughs> Is she asleep? Nope, her eyes are open. She's All listening. Right. Good for her. She's in rapt attention. That's good. <laughs> Other thoughts on this? Well, I don't know why anybody would want their loved ones to live forever, like you said, in a in a broken world where you're going to be tempted by evil continually on and on and on when if you die you're going to go to heaven and it's going to all that evil's going to be gone well that also raises the question though of well and and sometimes you hear this from small children well if heaven's such a great place why don't we go there now why don't we just go now and get it over with it's not ready it's not time yet it's not prepared for you mm -hmm. I think it comes back to the idea that life is God's to give. It, it, it is God's to give life and to take it away. We have things we have to do here. We're supposed to be here doing things. We're supposed to be helping other people. We're supposed to be living Christian lives. And, and that brings up kind of another issue that I see all the time, especially in nursing homes but not, not exclusively, is that of people get to the stage in life where they can't do anything and they kind of lose their purpose. It's like, I, I, I don't have any role to play. I, there's nothing for me to do, whether through infirmity or uh, mental difficulty or what have you. How do we, how do we address that situation? You can still pray. Okay. So how many times you see somebody retire and they don't have anything to do? They have no hobbies. They have don't go visit people. They don't volunteer. They just sit in their chair and waste away. And the health goes. Yeah, I've never understood that philosophy or goal of wanting to retire to a cabin or a beach and just do nothing. I, that would drive me nuts after about a day. Yeah, no, no, give me a week. A week on a beach would be okay. But Give Marvin an hour. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that's that's a good point you bring up because it, it's really interesting. Uh, Darlene's sister just retired last year, and I was talking with her husband, and he said, "You know, I used to have time at home to myself, and uh, <laughs> I just don't." And she can't understand why he's always out on his mower. <laughs> Even in the middle of winter. <laughs> well, you just you, you need some time. You need you need time to yourself, I guess. But yeah. What 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 do you tell someone who feels like they have no purpose? And and I hear this like I said all the time. I'm just here marking time. Do you think those are things that? before we do retire that we need to be thinking through, not just, you know, you're going to retire and sit on a beach or whatever, but that we, we've got to find a purpose for ourselves beyond today, beyond our job, that we have to have that purpose. You got to continue a purpose in your life. It just didn't well, end once your job's over with. I, I agree. And, and that goes to the bigger question of what is our purpose in life? Mm -hmm. I think. Why are we here? Why are any of us here? That wasn't a rhetorical question. <laughs> Why are any of us here? God put us here. God yeah. put us here, and what are we all supposed to do? We're here. We're here. supposed to be here as his disciples. We're here to glorify God in our lives. Mm -hmm. No matter what he's given us, no matter how long we have, that, that's what we're supposed to be doing in, in whatever measure or whatever that looks like. And if you're in a nursing home and that's your reality, how about a, starting a Bible study or going and visiting residents or getting together and singing hymns? People love to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't stop our, if our main purpose in life is glorifying God that doesn't stop just because we retire from whatever mm -hmm. occupation we have to have. for some people it does. <laughs> yeah but you see I, I, I do know pastors who have retired who still stay active mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. I, and I think Everybody can do that to some degree. Volunteer at a soup kitchen or Salvation Army or what have you. Start a ministry here. So we all do have a purpose. We all have a purpose in life to glorify God with whatever time he's given us. That just looks different at different stages of our lives. It just it just it just plays out different. Um, so yeah, for some people it may be nothing more than prayer. That's all they can do. Yeah. Okay. So Marvin, you're not retiring to the beach. <laughs> no. <laughs> I see Donna rolling her eyes. <laughs> If the beach has a, a garage and a greenhouse, maybe. <laughs> you can you can design oh, yeah. well, two houses like that. <laughs> and access to the golf course. Yes. Yes. Don't be too afraid of a hurricane. I, I can see me put my whole life savings and buying a beach house and a hurricane comes up the next day. <laughs> Flattens it. <laughs> I think we're much safer here in Indiana. I'm here and say hello. Yeah, in California, they say, well, we don't want to live in the Midwest because we say we don't want to live in California because of earthquakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a buddy. <laughs> there's a lot of reasons not to live in California. Earthquakes. <laughs> yeah. That's just the least of them. 
<laughs> Speaking of which, is your son ever getting out of there? No, probably not. So he's not going to run my Chick Fil A. No, he's not. I I mean, I really wouldn't count on it because they still haven't figured out what they're doing with his disability. They still and they want to. They haven't done surgery. They are trying to do just a settlement with him so that he can just pay for the surgery himself. And then I don't know what's going to happen. So, was it my understanding that the Chick Fil A truck is coming back this weekend? I think so, but I didn't see what it. I saw the, the sign on the. <laughs> I like the where. <laughs> it would be in the same place. It'd be in the Ace Hardware parking lot. Yeah, that's where I saw it. I saw it on the board, on the light up board out in front of okay. Ace. Mm. Well, I may make a trip from Rushville just to go get a Chick fil A. You have to. Linda, how does uh, Garrett, uh, how does uh, Mark and uh, Jane, Jane like California? Oh, they like California. <laughs> oh, I think there's got some issues, but basically, um, they like it pretty well, mostly before the, because of the climate and what you know the activities that are close. Um, I don't know; they're kind of liberal, so if you're politically speaking, it doesn't bother them too much. Right. Keep, keep them out there. We don't need Californians <laughs> coming to Indiana and turning them into <laughs> Mark calls California the land of fruit and pie. Oh. <laughs> That's what Amelia said. That's what your I sister saw, Mark said. That. I saw an interesting, ex I didn't see it, I heard about it. I'd like to see if it actually worked. An experiment where a guy put a bunch of nuts in a bunch of uh, maybe raisins or some kind of fruit in a jar, a big jar. Mm -hmm. And he shook them up and he said, you can see this is exactly like life. The nuts always come out on top. <laughs> so I guess that works out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, hmm. well, I'm frustrated with the school system right now that, yeah. and uh, we're still closed down and open. Well, for 10 hours a week, that's the only school that we have. So, wow. But, um, yeah, and of course the mask mandate. When we were out there, you had to wear a mask outside if you were within 30 feet of a person. And if you were walking down the sidewalk, wearing a mask, and met another person, they would veer out into the street or cross the street rather than, rather than walk right by you. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think he did that in California before the mass, didn't they? <laughs> world out there, I swear. It's just, it's just a different They're all afraid. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Brad well, said, I think we've all decided then that um, whenever our time is, God will decide that. And yep. we just pray that God gives us the strength to fight the good fight all the way to the end mm -hmm. whenever that is and we accept whatever his will is for our lives I, I was just reading a story about a former chicago bear player a guy I used to like and follow a little bit 63 so he's not that that's young that's very young. down with als mm -hmm. you just think mm -hmm. wow and just to God, whatever God has in store for us, that he would give us the strength and courage to walk the great, through, get through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is our prayer. Amen. All right. Sounds like Amen. a good place to stop. Mm -hmm. um, everybody stay safe, and hopefully we will see you in the near future then, right? Mm -hmm. who, is, who is going to be filling in for me not this week but the week after Steve Holland Steve Holland yes mm -hmm. he was former uh, Baptist preacher at uh, Waldron and he's a hospice uh, chaplain now oh okay good All right. I just didn't remember his name okay but I will be here Sunday and hope that you are too alright All right.
All right. Okay. Later. Bye. 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 Bye.